Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Wilson's Heart. Now this is a virtual reality game exclusively for the Oculus Rift and Touch. The video itself is a part of my new VR series which has been made possible thanks to Oculus being kind enough to send me both the Rift and Touch controllers as well as some games. Wilson's Heart then is a very aesthetic game set inside a, a mental institution. It calls itself a psychological thriller and does have some quite heavy touches of horror to it. Now it's also got quite some substantial puzzles to it. We're going to jump in and start having a look at all of this right now. As we go through the video, I'll switch between live commentary that I recorded whilst playing and narration that I've added to the video after the fact. And I think this will give us a good balance and a good feel for what the game's all about. So let's get to it then. So then, here we are in what looks to be some type of hospital and a very creepy one at that. The whole wall has been ripped out on some of the roof. And we're tied up, as you can see, right here, to some sort of weight pulley system. No idea what's going on, but I'd imagine it's some sort of none too pleasant uh, experiment. I certainly wouldn't want to be here, and it doesn't look like anyone else wants to be here either, since the place is empty. Now, I have played a little bit of this, but only a few minutes in, just enough to get a feel for the controls, so I don't know too much about it just yet. But we can get ourselves free, I do know that. Let's remove these pins. And we are out of here. Moving around is done simply by looking at outlines of your body. And it'll tell you where you can go. And anywhere there's not a silhouette, you can't actually go. But you teleport to these locations by using the movement controllers right here. And we've got some instructions here, which is a great way, I feel of explaining how the game actually works. It tells us how we can interact and how we can move around. <clears throat> so we've got darkened outlines like the one there. That's showing us somewhere we've already been. And over there is somewhere we haven't been yet. So I'm going to go right over there. And this place really is very, very creepy. The black and white, the black and white visuals really do add to the ambience. Uh, looks like the loonies have escaped the asylum. Got out down there through bed linen strapped to the bedpost. Some more instructions. Oh, and help. Oh, yeah, this place don't look great, does it? Where else can we go then? Over there. So, I don't know the exact time period of this, but I'd imagine... This place is in the 40s, maybe early 50s. And who knows what happened here? It looks particularly unpleasant. Probably lots better there by the looks of it. And rather unpleasant looking mess on the bed. So one thing you'll have noticed quite quickly is the fact the game relies on teleportation to get you around and this is now a pretty common theme amongst many room scale VR games and the idea behind this is to prevent motion sickness and it's very very effective. Now I can fly inside uh, vehicles inside VR and, and I don't suffer much motion sickness but when walking here. around it can be a bit of a problem so teleportation really does get around that. Now you might have just heard the guy's voice there. If you recognise that, or if you didn't recognise it, it's actually Peter Weller of Robocop fame. So he's playing the guy that we're actually playing here. And a little bit further in, we come across a mirror here. Now mirrors in VR are a very strange thing. For me, I've always found them to be extremely surreal. Looking in a mirror and seeing someone else look back, who mimics your body movements and who copies your uh, hand movements, well that just adds to the whole experience. So Rawson's Heart is full of a variety of puzzles. Initially these start off very fairly simplistic and just involve you trying to navigate your way around. Here I found a key in the bathroom and you can put that straight into your inventory which appears in contextual moments. Getting out of the ward here is not too difficult. Early on you saw that these doors were shut and I found the key for some reason located or left in the bathroom there. Now one thing that's really great about VR is how intuitive all the controls are. If you want to open a door, you simply reach out and grab the handle and open the door. The and the same principle go? applies to pretty much everything else. I noticed the clock up there in full reverse. Should we try and ring someone? Maybe the operator can help. 
Now, that's really weird. The closer you hold the earpiece to your ear, the louder the ringtone actually gets. Emergency dial, zero, zero, zero. Now, it's a very long time since I've used one of these phones. Don't know how many of you will actually remember using these. I'm a bit wary of what's coming down that hole there. I'm a patient here in the hospital. Look, something is wrong. I'm not sure what is going on, but I... <laughs> it's you. I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to need you to clear the line. What? I said clear the line. Well, this place just gets weirder and weirder, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. Oh, look. The cable disappears. What's over here? Oh, looks like another key. We're going to be wanting that, I'd imagine. In our magic inventory, and I guess we can get going again. What we got here? Harcourt, Harcourt Hall. Hydrant, the fire hydrant's been smashed and taken. Can't go through that door. We can go through that door. I want to look at what those sparks are going on up there. Oh! <clears throat> Oh, I don't know. Don't get help. Oh. Well, that didn't look very good, did it? The game actually does a remarkable job of building up the suspense. There are a few jump scares early on, and we've actually skipped over a couple of those. But to be honest, the game doesn't really rely on jump scares to generate the atmosphere here. Instead, it builds a slow psychological pressure up that creates a suspense-filled atmosphere. And that's all added with moments of darkness like this. Although this, of course, is a fairly light foreshadowing of what's to come. The book itself plays a fairly significant and key part towards the game. And throughout the progress, you'll find missing pages which you'll need to assemble to basically further the plot. There's still some rather creepy moments like that, and they will undoubtedly freak you out upon the first time you actually encounter them. Listen to the sound. Strange moments indeed. Oh! Jesus Christ! Looks like we're in trouble now. Can we get back? Oh, fire hydrant? Yeah, fire hydrant. We want the fire hydrant. How do we... Oh, smash it! Yeah, let's hope it does work. Uh, now goes the fire, I hope. Just enough there, look. Right. I guess let's see through. I don't want any more. Let's go through the doors then. Interaction with the environment really is everything. Even the most basic of tools and the most basic of interactions really do add to what the game's all about. Now, if this had not been a VR game and instead had been a regular game, then I suspect a lot of the most basic interactions would have actually called the game to have quite a fair amount of criticism. Yet, when it comes to VR, the story is very different because you're directly interacting with these things, so it feels like you're very much immersed in the environments. And talking of environments, the game has a huge variety of them. From the ward that you start out in, to the massive variation in different it's types of holes, all the way to places like this that have their own unique type of atmosphere. And the steam here, well, that gets to give you a kind of enclosed feeling, oh and you never know what's behind you or what's around the corner. Over here, there's a light switch, for example, and we make our way over there. Oh, I don't like this. The music's just got a little bit creepy. Oh, hello! Dead guy. That's the doctor from the um doctor from the painting, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, Doctor Harcourt. We got something in his pocket. Page from a book, perhaps. Uh, do we have to go there? Right, a bunch of keys. 
Okay then. We'll leave you in the dark, I think. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, I tell you, I swear this guy is not all there. He's certainly a bit on the crazy side, isn't he? Oh, hello. Oh, you made me jump. Where did you come from? Where have you been? Don't know if you notice there, she actually steps back when I try and reach her. Look, I'm fine. Listen, there's a man back there. Now, I'm having a. F no, God damn it. Listen. I, I have a feeling she's not seeing what I'm seeing because then there's blood and everything around here. Okay, sir. Let's do a quick checkup to see what is going on with you. I want you to follow my finger, please. Nope. Oh, that finger gets really in your face. Yeah, okay. Woman, are you nuts? I'll follow it. This will just take a moment, sir. What's wrong with you? Over here now, please. Oh my God. The sense of depth here is amazing. The, the literally feels like a finger's right in my face. There's a dead man back there, and you're trying to. Stay with me, sir. Listen, goddammit, something is very wrong in this place. Just a few more seconds. Why what are you doing? You listen to me. Where is everyone? What in the hell is going on around here? Oh, that painting was creepy enough to start with. Start with. Okay, sir, let's get you back to that. Hey, Wilson! Excuse me, sir? I didn't say that. Where's he gone? You're more delirious than I thought. Lady, I didn't Oh, there's something behind you. Name, all right? Not behind you. Now that's just weird, isn't it? Ted gone wrong. Hmm. A teddy bear with Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger claws. What? Well, where? Where do I? Sweetie, here's right. We need some help over here. Well, this don't look good at all, does it? Let's go down the corridor, I guess. Oh. I guess we're too late and she is dead. Keys, what key is it though is a question. Oh, he's coming. Yeah, you just killed the nurse. Shut your mouth! Which one? Oh dear. Which key? Better yet. How about I take a look at you? How about you don't? Oh dear. Have we got away? <sighs> to be perfectly honest, I'm a little bit torn with the teddy bear there. On the one hand, it's extremely, extremely creepy. But on the other hand, well, it's a teddy bear. But this here is on an entirely different level. And the first time I encountered this, well, I was quaking in my boots just a bit. Where the teddy tries to go for a little bit of in-your-face creepiness, this here is pure psychological horror. You just don't know what's coming. So, whatever these creatures are, they're creatures of darkness, and they are destroyed by the light. And this forms a number of puzzles in the early stages of the game as you try and figure out how to bypass the darkened corridors. Puzzles then are almost entirely about interacting with your environment. Up there to the right, you can see some more of those shadowy Slenderman type figures, and yes, they're scared and destroyed by light. Here in the boiler room, that means turning on the gas and lighting the fires. But as you could hear Wilson just saying that the pilot light has gone out, so the place will not light up. A few more things to figure out then. What this does is leave you walking around these darkened halls all the time with those shadowy figures at your back, never quite knowing what they're going to do, always ever so slightly just outside of their reach. Virtual reality has been with us for a fair while now. The Oculus Rift itself has been on the market for just over a year. In that time, there's been all manner of games and all manner of experiences, but it seems that VR is really only just starting to find its feet. 
one of the things that has seemed to have been problematic for developers is the fact that VR places the player right inside the game, so nice. traditional ways of interacting with the game do not work. There I dropped that tool, unfortunately it does uh, reappear back where it was previously located, but it would be possible to crouch down and pick it up off the floor, that shouldn't be a problem at all. So the idea that now the player is right inside the game means that, well, you really need to feel as though you're there. And there are a few things that can actually sometimes break that, and that's the way Wilson's hands sometimes bend. They sometimes bend a little bit too far out and appear to be a little bit broken at times. That said, I've found them to be exceptionally well realised for the most part, and they really do a good job of anchoring you into the game. Another thing that's really interesting when it comes to virtual reality, and you may have noticed it early on when we were talking to the nurse there just before he had his crazy moment, is the interaction with other characters. Now essentially this is a room scale game, it means you're standing on your own two feet in your own room inside your own house or wherever you're actually playing, and the Oculus Rift is at head height. So what this means is when you encounter other characters and other NPCs, you're encountering them at eye level to eye level, just as you would in the real world, and your own height will probably factor into that as well. There's a cutscene somewhat early on that explains what the game is all about, and this is why the game gets its title, The Wilson's Heart. The guy has actually lost his heart, or seems to have had it removed, and replaced with some type of occult mechanical device, and we'll see a little bit about that slightly further in the video. Right here though, I want to show you one of the more satisfying puzzles that I've come across, and it took me a little while to actually figure out. I've actually skipped a few parts here, but I just want to show you how some of the puzzles in the game actually work. The bottle I found elsewhere, and I've filled it up with kerosene. We can then pour it all over the mattresses here, and again this really does highlight the fantastic way that you can interact with objects in the game. Now once these are coated, what you do with the bottle is your choice. I decided to throw the bottle onto the mattresses. Uh, we've not got much use for it now. And then we've got some matches which we found a little bit early on. So as I said previously in the video, these uh, gameplay mechanics would, if it was a regular game, seem very simplistic. But the fact you're in VR, the fact you're lighting these matches yourself, really does add wonderfully to the whole uh, atmosphere. And so we just need to get rid of these shadowy Slenderman type figures over there. And that just involves throwing some light down there in quite a literal way. The game itself isn't exceptionally long. You can get through it in around about five hours or so. And for some people, that is going to bring up some cost considerations. Now for me, I do find most VR games to be very replayable, simply because of the sort of environment that you find yourself in. For other people though, I'm sure their mileage is going to vary, and they might find it's a little bit expensive for the amount of time that you actually get out of it. For me though, it really is all about the experience. Here then is just one of the uses for Wilson's heart. You actually pull the heart straight out of your own chest when you're ready to use it, and you can actually rotate a dial around, which gives the orb a different function. In this case, we can use it as a weapon. One of the other functions it has at this point in the game is as a source of light. You can actually relight uh, damaged lightings. As you go through the game, you will encounter new functionality for your heart, which will serve different purposes. This scene here, I felt had some really strong Silent Hill vibes going on in there. This is the first time that you actually encounter any combat, and to be honest, the combat itself is somewhat basic, but it's the fact it does really add to the psychological pressure of the game. Pretty much, no matter which way you turn, there was always something very weird going on. This is the other type of combat in the game, and this is about hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we can block the other guy's punch, just as we did there, as you noticed, and then we can punch him in return. Now, whilst Wilson's heart may not be perfect, it's perhaps the combat which lets it down the most. It still marks the right direction, I personally feel, for the way virtuality needs to head. The way all the regular games have worked up till this point, and the fact that they may work very, very well on a regular screen, it doesn't always necessarily follow that they would then translate to a good VR experience. The good thing is then that Wilson's heart is both a good game and a good VR experience. It's got great, well-detailed, immersive environments and has some really nice pacing to it. The puzzles are nice and will get you thinking of how to use all the things you will find around you. It's all marred just very slightly by the rather basic combat. Yet for me, finding myself right in the middle of a story like this one 
really is what gaming is all about. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Don't make them like they used to.